Okay guys, back down here at the park. I did this, uh, walked around this loop for a warm up, quarter mile. Then I'll be right doing those here in a second, going up all those stairs you see there. All right guys, see you in a bit. Okay, that's one. I'm gonna do a couple more, maybe three. Feeling good. Humans for fitness, and I'm out. Okay guys, that was number two. No break in between. Went straight down, turned around, came straight back up. So, two in a row, building it up and I'm feeling better. He went for fitness and I'm out.
Who's doing that? Martha. Martha went down there. She's down there. Okay guys, <laughs> that was number three. The most times I've done them since I was on this diet. Uh, one and two was straight up and down. Uh, there was a gap in between the third. I walked a quarter mile first. So, you got half a mile walking and three times up and down the stairs. Going great. <laughs> uh, my breathing's getting better. Everything's feeling good. Humans for fitness. I'm out. Okay guys, that went great. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, basically what happened was um, I walked three quarters of a mile and I did the stairs three times. It's the first time I could get three times up and down the stairs since I started this diet and it felt great. Everything went good and uh, just couldn't be better. Now you ask, am I done? No, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm on my way to the gym. Um, I'm going to do the elliptical and I'm going to do my abs for about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, it's elliptical I don't know yet and uh, no weightlifting today letting the muscles recoup so I'll see you guys in a bit humans for fitness and I'm out okay over 20 minutes 2334 strides Okay guys, I had 20 minutes, over 20 minutes on the elliptical. Now it's time to hit the mat for some crunches. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he would, and, and he was tough, like I said, but he was an encourager. You know, for me, uh, just, you know, getting a little personal, um, you know, like I was saying, I mean, you know, George used to hand me, you know, Bible verses before some of my playoff starts and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that was just, you know, he was tough, but he was always there to support you also, you know. And again, I don't think enough it is said about the, the support that he would give you, but it was tough support. So I think sometimes the tough support doesn't get, you know, quite the limelight. But, um you know, he expected a lot, he demanded a lot, he, he raised, I believe, the level of not only the Yankees, you know, organization and what they want to do as far as winning and winning championships, but I, I feel like he's raised the bar around baseball for other For any of you guys, what did winning, winning really mean to him? You know, any stories like after you won something big that he came to your end on I mean, winning the World Series meant a lot to him but the next day he was back to work he was like okay how are we going to win next year um so I, I really believe that he enjoyed it but he stayed the course all the time that and, and I, we experienced that in 1996 we won in 1996 and we were told that he was already planning for 1997 when they were planning the parade how are we going to win this year i think he truly loved it and probably felt that it was a huge accomplishment but he never rested in it was it Andrew then Enrique Bijan on the grass the beautifully manicured grass in spring training and I thought oh boy he's gonna let my wife and I have it but I mean he sat and talked to us asked about the dog and it was a totally different expectation than what I had and, and that was probably the first time but I realized that you know he wasn't everything that he was painted to be. There was there was a gentle side to this this man, but I got to tell you, you know, one of his athletes walking a little white dog. I was expecting something totally different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me it was um, uh, 2004 when I came in. He was basically uh, congratulating me for coming in uh, to the New York Yankee organization. And within the first two minutes, he said the word, we have to win a world championship. 
how big and you know how fortunate we are to go to work there every day. I mean, I know I talk with Andy and even Skip and, and a lot of my teammates is we have the most beautiful place in the world to play every day, and you know it has its mark all over it. And for me, um, when you hear guys that have been in the organization like Andy and Jeet and Mo and and Joe and guys that have been here a lot longer than I have, when you hear how endearing their stories are about you know, the boss um, back in the day when they came out and all these great stories, that's the only thing you take away from it. Derek Jeter's on his way in. So as uh, the three current members of the Yankee organization, Andy Pettit, Alex Rodriguez, and Joe Girardi exit, we expect Derek Jeter to enter very soon. I'm here with Bobby Valentine and Dave Winfield, and uh, you certainly are left to wonder with Derek regards to uh, Yankee Stadium. To uh, and perhaps they'll rename the stadium or maybe the field or do something around the stadium to honor uh, the legendary George Steinbrenner. And now let's send it back inside and hear what Derek Jeter Derek has to say on the day George Steinbrenner passes away at the age of 80. A lot of messages, and that was um, how I found out. So shocked to say the least it's it's uh i don't really know if you can put it into words it's, it's sad but you know you're, you're just shocked uh, to your left eric eric just back, just back here but there was so much outside of the yankee family george steinbrenner became such a, an icon in pop culture so to speak especially with the whole seinfeld aspect of it was there ever a moment for you in all your years that kind of had that quirky experience with the so-called buzz? I had a lot of quirky experiences. With is there one that stands out, though, particularly? Um, you know what? The thing is, is, is I have a great...